Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. It's probably just a coincidence that the man who first told me the 90-10 rule of magic works behind the scenes on this very program. It was the great Tom Sony himself who explained to me that if a magician shows somebody a trick and 90% of that trick fools them, but there's a little 10% sliver over here that does not fool them, the average person will say that the trick did not fool them, even though they can't explain 90% of it. Contrarywise, if that same magician shows that same trick to his fellow conjurers, it only takes that 10% sliver for them to admit that they were fooled. I don't know if it's true or not, but I want to put it to the test tonight by doing something I think unprecedented. I'm going to explain in advance how most of the trick you're about to see works. First of all, gentlemen, there what you can take notes if you want to. Uh, first of all, <laughs> There's a principle at the center of this trick that you will certainly recognize. It's at least 400 years old, probably much older. Uh, and you yourselves have used versions of it on this very stage. So I'm sure that you'll recognize what that is immediately. Secondly, you will see some sleight of hand. And I know that you know what sleight of hand looks like. So uh, I concede all of that. And there will be a little bit, just a little bit, of verbal misdirection which may or may not have already begun. <laughs> and, and finally, actually that's it, that's it. That is, truthfully, honestly, at least 90% of what you're about to see. I'm not interested in that 90%, nor should you be. I'm only interested in the little remaining 10%, the part where you and you get reminded of what it's like to see magic. And to do that, you need to be close. Would you please come up here and join me oh, on the stage? <clears throat> Welcome. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. <laughs> uh. ah, good to see you. So uh, the composition by John Ramsey, the particular arrangement I'm going to play for you today is by a dear departed and much missed Tim Conover. This is a classic called The Cylinder and Coins. I have some unusual props, which I'll tell you about in a moment. Uh, but for you, the important props are these four silver dollars. This uh, is a drink coaster. Tonight it's going to act as a little stage, like a little raised platform. This is where all of the important action will take place. And uh, the little piece of cork sits out there on the stage. The cork is just the end of a wine cork that I shaved off with a knife, just a little piece of cork. It will play the role of the MacGuffin, if you're <laughs> familiar with that term, and uh, be hidden inside the little cylinder. Oh, and the cylinder, I should tell you, is just a little strap. You can take that off of there. It's a little strap of leather that's had its ends stitched together. It's hollow. You can completely see through it. Pen, if you want to check it out, you're welcome trust to. Teller on this one. Uh, and I'll let you see down through there, okay? So the important thing about the cylinder is that there's no top or bottom, so anything dropped inside will pass right through. And as I said, the cork goes inside the cylinder, and we're ready to begin. This would be the time if you want to pay really close attention. One, two, three, four coins. The idea, very simply, one by one, I'm going to take these coins and I'm going to make them disappear, each in a different way. The first one, the wand passes through my hand like this, and that coin sort of melts from my hand and appears down inside the cylinder, even though you're staring at the cylinder and it's right out in the open. Three coins left behind, one, two, three. Nothing else in my hands. That's number one, that's number two, and that third one, wait, there it goes. That third one, just a little like that, and it disappears completely. Now, you're very polite. A lot of times when I do this for non-magicians, they'll grab hold of my wrist at this point and start looking at my skin to see if there's a slit or a pocket or something. Uh, there's not, but I can make it look like I have, like if I make a little fake incision right here in the back and I push down, that coin goes right through to the inside. Or I could push it down inside and then touch it with the magic wand and it instantly disappears down inside the little cylinder. That leaves just this one, the last, the final coin. And we'll do it like this, from my left hand over, actually since the last one, let's do it right-handed, long distance. From the tip of the wand, it goes like this across the table, and it disappears down inside the little cylinder. And just so you have something interesting to talk about when you go back over there, <laughs> I could not have dropped them in because they are resting underneath that little piece of cork. <clears throat> okay. 
Thank you very much. I feel like I'm running out of time here. Thank you very much. So I want to do this last part very quickly. We'll do the whole thing in reverse. The little piece of cork goes in my hand, the coins inside the cylinder. Did I say coins? The coins, I'll leave them sticking out there, right? The little piece of cork is in my hand, the coins to the last second you see them inside the cylinder, and then we travel back in time to where one of those coins was right here at my fingertips. That's coin number one. A second coin out there in the air, that's number two. Don't blink, that's number three. Three coins from nowhere. Of course, we didn't start with three, we started with four. That's that fourth coin. The little piece of cork instantly disappears, and don't even try to pretend that didn't fool you. And right over here, inside, the little piece of cork that has no bottom, no top. And that is what magic should look like. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Clearly. Good. And yeah. to do that. They are now working time. very hard on yeah. talking about what happened there. You just have big cojones to do it that close to <laughs> those guys. How I mean, kind of you to notice, yeah. I guess. Because, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, to do it right with them sitting right oh, there. Oh, yeah. Well, close up magic should be up close. So, do you think that there's a chance you'd fooled them? I oh. think it's it's unlikely that they're going to say they were fooled, and here's why. Everything that I said up front is true. <laughs> they recognize the, the main body of the trick, they know that there's sleight of hand, and they could just say that, and I would have to concede that that's correct. So the question is, would they... <laughs> The question is, where do they draw the line? If I, I'm certain there are a couple of beats along the way that were puzzling or mystifying to them. Is that enough to say that they were fooled? I don't know. I doubt it. But we're about to find out, I think. I don't know. I like just watching them squirm. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Eric, uh, you, cho you chose to do something really, really difficult, which is coin magic in front of us. Uh, there are certain principles in coin magic we just know. And uh, there's certain things that we did say. Uh, probably the most brilliant thing you did uh, was to uh, do an introduction where you changed the rules of the game on us. You changed it from having a pretty good idea how it was done overall to this 10% thing, which has nothing to do with fool us. It's totally what you pushed on us. But you know, part of the magic thing is game theory. And you played the game theory perfectly. And then you threw it in our laps and said, you decide whether I fooled you or not. So yeah, we know coin magic. Yeah, we know you, Eric, but it is in our laps and Just got SD'd. Oh.